Hi there, my name is Nils with learn to diy and if you've got any sort of a hole or tear or issue with your window screen, I'm going to show you exactly how you can take care of that. Now first, if you just have a small hole like this, you can barely see it so I put a piece of paper behind, um, just a teeny little hole like this, you can purchase a little patch. There's a small patches like this for about $3 or for six or seven, you can buy a larger patch that is heat adhesive. Now with these, they have a little hook shape all along the outside and the objective is pretty simple. Basically you're gonna, if you just need to cover this up and you're not too worried about how it looks, then you can feed some of the hooks in one side. Once I get those in one side, I'm just gonna use my fingers from the other side of it, kind of hook those around one of the lines like so, and then you can push the other end in, and same thing, you're gonna just kind of bend it in the opposite direction to just attach those hooks on there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. With that, the hole is patched. It doesn't look great, so if you're just looking for a functional fix, that's a good way to go, but if you really wanna do it right, I'll show you how to replace the entire thing. So this is actually really inexpensive to fix, you can pick up a roll of screen material. This stuff is anywhere from about $7.50 to $15 or $20, depending on if you get fiberglass, aluminum, or pet screen. Those are three different types. If you have pets, you might want to go with a pet screen. It helps deter the holes that come from scratching. If you have aluminum, which is the metallic stuff that doesn't bend very much, then you'll probably want to replace it with aluminum. Or you can go with fiberglass, which has a little more give. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit softer and that's what I'm gonna put on here. Now a couple of other items that you'll most likely need is the spline itself. You can see in here this little piece that's a little rubber hose looking thing that's called a spline. It's typically black and it comes in multiple diameters. There's a 0.14 or 9 64ths of an inch and that's the most common size. That's what I've got right here. So before you go to the hardware store to purchase some of this, if you feel the need to do so, then make sure to take a look at what size you've got and if possible, bring some with you so that you can make that perfect comparison. Now you don't always need to buy new splines. Sometimes you can reuse the stuff that's in here. The other thing you're gonna need is some sort of a spline roller. These are about five to six dollars. They're really inexpensive. You're also going to need a straight edge blade and then maybe a, a flathead screwdriver or a slotted screwdriver to help with the corners. The first thing we need to do is remove the existing spline. And I noticed on mine that it looks like it starts and ends right up here. So I'm gonna dig in here and see if I can get that spline to come out. Now I have a very rigid frame on this door so it doesn't bend much, but if yours is something that's bending quite a bit, it might help to tape it down or to clamp it down to a work surface and that'll help the frame stay in place and just make your life a little bit easier. So you're just gonna remove this all the way around and typically they'll be in one piece like this. They'll bend around the corners now once you have the, the spline released, then it should be fairly easy to poke, poke out the screen itself. And again, some of these might be a little more deteriorated or in bad shape than others. This one's coming out pretty easy. And on mine, I might have to cut it. Nope, it's mostly already cut. Um, there we go. I want to keep this, this piece intact in my case. I'm just going to do that. I want to take just a moment to tell you about our sponsor for today's video, Fixer.com. Now, if you, like me, are the kind of person who likes to do DIY projects around the house, but sometimes you need the advice of a professional or you just want to check something with someone who knows their stuff, Fixer.com is exactly that. With Fixer.com, you have access to a group of professional tradespeople who really know their stuff. You can schedule some time with a pro by heading over to fixer.com slash learn to DIY. And by doing so, you'll save $10 off your first consultation. The first five minutes are free. So hop on over to fixer.com slash learn to DIY today to move ahead with confidence. Now, once you've got your screen out, that's a great time to clean up your grooves here. I've got a lot of debris in here, for example. So I'm gonna clean that up real quick and then get ready to put the new screen in. Now that we've got our work surface ready, next up we're gonna take some of our screen material, and this is just extras that I had from a previous job, but you wanna lay it out to where it covers everything, 
and then just get out some scissors. If it's fiberglass, you can actually usually cut the aluminum stuff um, and certainly the pet screen with scissors as well. Now, once you've got it laid out like this, if you're able to reuse your spline, go ahead and do so. I'm just gonna put in new spline because I have some. The different ways you can put this in, if you've got a regular kind of pizza slicer roller, then you can just start by putting in the rounded side and then follow it up with the grooved side of your wheels. And in my case, with this mouse, you actually insert the, the uh, spline right in through it like this, and then you feed it underneath. So I'm gonna pick a corner to start in. I'll start down here, and I'm gonna actually use my screwdriver to sort of push this in to get us going. There we go. Should go all the way in and really pucker on that, uh, on that screen like you see here. And then once I've got it started, I'm gonna use the wheel to push it in. And then you let the back wheel on this one ride along. And that kind of double seals it in. If it starts to come out like mine just did and just readjust. But basically you're just riding this one-handed along the groove. It should give you a Pretty nice fit here. And when I get to a corner, there we go. And I'm just going to use the screwdriver. And we'll continue doing the same thing. So we'll, we'll push this in. Now, as I do this bottom piece, if you've got window tabs that are fragile and broken, these little window tabs are often just brittle, they just snap right off. So you can buy corner springs and pull tabs and you can actually just put those in. They go right under the spline. So I would lay one right here and lay one right here, for example, and then run the spline right over them. Those tabs sit in and that allows you to pull the frame of the window out when you need to. And when you get to the end of your section, just use your sharp blade and Slice off that spline, and then the screwdriver to put those last pieces in place. There we go. So now I've got a nice screen here, nice and taut. Now the last thing we have to do is to remove the excess, and this goes pretty easily. The idea is you're gonna run at a 45 degree angle on the back side or the outside of your spline, and it's gonna go up against the middle groove, like so. Keep your hands out of the way. And then this fiberglass should cut pretty easy. Even the uh, aluminum should cut okay. So here's the angle we're shooting for here. Okay. All right, and with that, the new screen is in place. It's nice and taut and everything looks good. Now, if there's more to it in your case, for example, if you have a bent frame, you can actually bend that back into place like I'm doing in this video here, like you can see, by using a straight edge, pulling it up against it, and then replacing that screen. Oftentimes, it's that tension that where the screen got pushed, and so if you can reframe it and straighten out that frame, then you're in good shape. Or you can buy a whole new screen, or you can custom cut one yourself with a kit, and all you need is a hacksaw and the same tools that you see us using here. And then the kit comes with everything except for the screen material, which you would need to purchase separately. And that's it for this project. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.